Hello, glad to see you for the third part of my series about how I try to develop a real military faction in the game RimWorld. If you haven't seen the previous parts, I strongly advise you to familiarize yourself with them and return to watching this one. I think there's no point in dragging out this introduction. You are on Johnny Play's channel, like and subscribe to the channel and we'll get started. First of all, I decided that it would be advisable to slowly extract all the minerals that we can find on our map because we spend quite a lot of steel and components on our development and we need to replenish our reserves one way or another. And I also decided that it would be very good to optimize the space in our warehouse with the help of racks. I think it will help us a lot and I won't have to expand the storage all the time. We were contacted by a man who reported that he was running away from raiders. He offered to join our colony if we protect him. I did not refuse this because our new colonist turned out to be a good builder and miner. His pursuers did not wait long and landed on the edge of our map in the number of 13 people. I was not very scared because I am confident in the strength of my defenders. And I was not mistaken, the first raider fell from a well hit shot without reaching us. After that his friends began to approach, they by the way brought with them war boars which were also not a threat to us. After the second raider was knocked down, one of the enemies used a ballistic dome that protected the enemies from the hail of our bullets, and when the third raider was neutralized, all the others began to run away, hiding behind this dome, because of which my colonists simply could not get any one of them. One of the overthrown raiders was taken prisoner because he had very good abilities in shooting, crafting, medicine, communication, and science. In my opinion, he is an almost ideal colonist who had no bad traits at all. Unfortunately, our prisoner decided to escape from our prison, but at that time one of my colonists was nearby and was able to stop him with a good shot from a shotgun. Fortunately, the wound was not fatal and we returned the prisoner to his cage. I continued to collect all the resources available on the map in order to have as large a supply of steel and components as possible in case we are cut off from the street and need to be in the house for a certain long time. In the end, I finished the quest with Bumalops. Now I have a thickened barrel for the mortar and also a biofuel generator that will now generate free fuel for us 24-7. Therefore, I decided not to waste time and immediately installed a generator in the room next to the crematorium. After that, I started building kill boxes and walls in order to more effectively defend our base. I decided that we would enter it at an angle and also set up a line of embrasures behind which our turrets and defenders would be located. And I also decided that it was time to put a high-tech research table in order to be able to research more advanced weapons. And it was at this time that our prisoner agreed to become part of our colony. I hope he will cope with the duties that we have assigned to him. I agreed to give shelter to the residents of the friendly faction for 19 days. For completing this task, I will receive shells for the mortar, as well as 338 units of plasteel. You may ask why I get so many resources. The whole point is that a cluster of mechanoids will land on my map with which I will need to do something, and if we take into account that we are playing with combat extended, then the difficulty will increase many times due to the lethality of any mechanoid shots in the direction of my colonists, and my colonists are far from will always be able to at least break through the heavy armor of metal monsters. By the way, it was the first opportunity to test our kill box. We were attacked by an aggressive bumalope, which my colonists stopped with two shots. After that, I decided to slightly strengthen the inner walls of the kill box with the help of sandbags and also install a steel floor so that the kill box does not grow trees and does not burn grass. And also I installed the turrets and connected them to the mains. And just after that, we were attacked by aggressive raccoons on which we tested our new turrets. I built a mortar and started the production of shells for it. I think we will need it very much. Finally, after the completion of the construction of the defense, our guests arrived. Now it remains to wait for the mechanoids who should also arrive. A psi storm has begun, which greatly affects everyone who falls under it. All in all, it took about one day, but too many things happened in that time. To put it very simply, we were attacked by the mechanoids that I had been driving around with for most of the day, during which all my colonists began to go crazy from time to time and attack each other. During such attacks of aggression, I used up all my supply of good medicines. Our guests who came to trade with our colony also went crazy. Then our guests did help us deal with the last mechanoid, which we could not destroy in any way. And it's also worth noting that because of this psi storm, many of my colonists changed their tastes and skills, and two of the colonists got psi abilities, and now I actually have active psi fighters even without the Empire's permission. In the end, the storm ended and we were left to sort out all the problems it forced us to face. 
The main problem was that now our supply of medicines was exhausted and all my colonists were wounded and in a bad mood due to the pain of their injuries. As I expected, the mechanoids landed almost immediately after I sheltered our guests. In fact, we were lucky that the cluster landed quite far from our base and there were no combat mechs there, only turrets. The main problem with this cluster was that it had a toxic fallout generator. And in order for my colonists to be able to walk down the street in peace, I decided that it was necessary to shoot this generator with a mortar, after which it was destroyed. Then I organized several forays, but they were not successful at all. After that, I shelled the cluster with a mortar for several days in order to destroy most of the turrets, and in the end, I decided to craft a heavy machine gun and from a long distance, where even the mechanoid turrets could not reach, I conducted continuous fire for several hours, after which the cluster was finally destroyed. I began to plan the thickening of our outer walls so that the enemy would not even think of entering our base through anything other than a kill box. I think it will take some time. And by the way, we rescued a space refugee whom I want to recruit. Meanwhile, the construction of the wall continued. Day after day, our wall became more and more completed. And I also want to note that the space refugee whom we saved refused to join, after which I took him prisoner and wanted to prove to him that he still needs to be with us. Attack of seven raiders. I don't even remember if I had an easier defense than this one. It was enough to kill only three boars and wound one raider for all the others to start retreating. By the way, we captured the wounded man and will also make him part of our colony. This is how I plan to finish the third series of how I build a military base in the game RimWorld. Subscribe to the channel, like it and watch other videos on the channel. Johnny was with you. Goodbye.